Presbyterian College men's basketball coach Greg Nybert and his wife Peggy have embraced the challenge of fostering children. They first answered the call in 2006 to serve as foster parents for abused and neglected children. Through their compassion, they have brought 38 babies into their Clinton, South Carolina home, some for weeks, some for years. They provide love and stability while helping these children find a way to better lives. I had been a stay-at-home mom for a lot of years since my boys were getting older and getting a little bit more independent. I knew that there was something more I needed to be doing. I knew that there was something more that the Lord wanted me to do. I just had to figure out what that was. And I dabbled in several things um, that were not what hmm. I was supposed to be doing. And all the while, in the back of my mind, I knew it had something to do with children because the children I felt like was my passion. It, it got to be so overwhelming that every billboard I saw and every article in the newspaper or every even conversation I had always came back to foster care or something about a child. Um, so when we called the family meeting, um, we didn't even know really what foster parenting was all about, what it even meant. I knew her well enough that she's been praying about it and the Lord put it on her heart. Uh, we, were all, we were all in and, and ready to do it no matter, no matter what that was. We didn't know what fostering, you know, was, was really about. We thought we might, you know, get a little boy or girl, a baby, and maybe, you know, keep it for a week or two and, and uh, put it back in the home and everything ends up being, you know, great. The way the Lord works, our, our first child, uh, we, we had it, we got him at five months old and uh, he was in the hospital with shaken baby and blunt force trauma to the head. And, and uh, you know, the Lord was with us every step of the way, but, uh, uh, we ended up having him two and a half years and uh, was, was, you know, ups and downs of one day he was close to going back in the home and we didn't really, we knew he shouldn't be going back in that home and everybody worked together and the Lord was in there the whole entire time when we get frustrated or think that maybe he's going to go back and now he's eight years old and, and uh, no, no brain damage and what a, what a great little story it is. I, I remember looking at Greg saying, as we put him in the car, heading to another state with his new family, um, I remember saying to Greg, why would we ever do this again? What it tells you is it's not about you. It's not about me. It's about these children because it wasn't a month or two later that we, had, we welcomed a new little girl into our home. So even though your heart breaks for the one you fell in love with and you're letting go, there are more children out there. That's the confirmation that you get. There are more needy children out there who just need a chance. I think from the very beginning when we were in our training, um, we were told to treat these children as if they're your own. That was not hard for us. Mm -hmm. uh, immediately you bring one into the home and it becomes yours for a time. Um, so with his hectic schedule and him being gone a lot, it just adds a new dimension the, the babies, the children that we have join our family. They're a little, bro they're a little brother or a little sister to our boys. They go where we go. They go to games mm. with me in the stands. They grow up watching basketball. Um, so it has been um, just, it's been a, a wonderful experience for us. I'm gonna be real honest. She does really the majority of all the work. I get blessed. Our two boys have been blessed because of this calling that she wanted us to do. Uh, to teach us to be, you know, more unselfish. And uh, if she's doing all that, when I do get home, and uh, it, it really has is, is made me a, a better coach and a better person, uh, it's not about, you know, the wins are important, but uh, it showed, showed me that uh, the compassion and that you, you know, the, to care for these little ones of, of putting things in, in really perspective. when you can take care of these little babies and, and uh, show them the love and she shows, shows them the love and, and uh, they're able to move on and they feel the love. Their little hands open up and the fists open up uh, that they were one felt like they were maybe gonna get abused again and all of a sudden they're, they're smiling and laughing and giggling and they've forgotten all about what's happened. Uh, just to be a little bit a part of that uh, is, is so rewarding. Our experiences have all, mostly all been very, very well, you know, very good. And again, it goes back to not being about us. It's hard though. It's hard because it, it is a child that you've, you know, learned to love. It doesn't take long. Mm -hmm. um, and then to let them go, it is hard every time. It doesn't get any easier, but you're exactly right. 
knowing that they're starting a new life now, a better life than maybe, you know, what they started out in. And that's the reward of it and that's what you do it for. I had to take a physical to, you know, be a foster parent and and, uh, not, and my doctor knew I wasn't going to get in there to take a PSA test, so he, he got me in there and, and uh, found out I had prostate cancer to, to begin this whole thing out. You know, when we got, you know, our first foster child and, and uh, I looked at him and, and obviously Peggy of, of uh, saving my life and he was our angel. My cancer's under control and, and uh, again, I look at him uh, like he's uh, the angel that uh, helped save, you know, my life. And, uh, and obviously Peggy, she's the one that, that uh, saved everything and, and because she's the one that got the ball rolling in terms of wanting to do this foster care. So I, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. This one unbelievable story is when we, we first had, you know, our first foster child and, and uh, we were going through some pretty tough things with making sure that he was going to be, you know, you know, terminate the parents rights and, and hopefully get him moved on. And uh, I was out in California. We were with our team and uh, it was in January. And, and uh, I think we were on like this 12 game losing streak. And all of a sudden I got a call on the cell phone uh, that, uh, you know, the judge ruled uh, termination. And, uh, you know, uh, you know, I'm up there emotional about how, hey, you know, that 12 game, you know, losing streak, uh, we, we, we did right by this child and it's gonna get moved on and have another, you know, place to go. So it, it, it's helped me keep things in, in perspective. We got our license in 2006. Our first child came to us um, March of 2007. We do some Department of Social Services babies as well. As well. We also do private care. Um, so we've had a total of 38, 38 babies in the nine or almost 10 years now. So the, the uh, journey of foster care has uh, changed my life. It's changed our family's lives. Um, it's made a difference in allowing me to find my passion for children and to be able to do something that I feel like maybe is making a difference one child at a time, just one child at a time.